This is Blake's Nature Life. Did I just shoot the camera? No. This is Blake's Nature Life. We're here with John. We're going to talk about some bananas. So this one's Cardaba. See that fruit up there? Yeah, we see it now. You can zoom in on it. Here's some of the fruit we're going to try. That's ripe. Ooh. What's the flavor on it? See, I want to get your face on camera. Try hey, let me it. put this down. <laughs> Here, just turn it around. Okay. Go All ahead right. and try one. Now, how do you how do you say this again? Cardaba. Cardaba. This is the one that I have at the house. Look how easy that peeled off. Yeah. Might be a little bad right there, so don't eat that part. <laughs> oh, it smells sweet. Well, it's like a dessert banana. It's a plantain type, though. I like how firm it is and real sweet. It doesn't have that core like an Orinoco. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Yeah. That was really good. Dang, John. Yeah. I thought you might like that. Man, we got to get you filming. Let me film you eat one. Well, I've already eaten a bunch of them. Wow, that's good. So I don't know if I'm going to have much of an expression. Try to describe to us, because I'm, I'm tasting a lot of different flavors. I'll, like a sweet and a firm and... So the first time I had this, you know, being kind of a plantain type, I don't remember exactly what it what it is, but it's part... It's a hybrid of those two species, the Cuminata and Valbiziana, that they all are. So mm -hmm. it's a, it's either an ABB or an AAB. I think it's an AAB type. Uh -huh. So I thought, you know, it would kind of be more similar to an Orinoco. But much different. But... Very different. I feel like this is more softer than the Orinoco. It's got bet, yeah. It's got better flavor and texture. And the, the Orinoco can, seems more like a one you, that you would fry. It can be quite sweet. I can I can taste it. So would someone let this ripen more to be sweeter? It would. I pick I pick these early too. See how angular they are. If I'd let it stay on the tree longer, it would have fattened up more. Mm-hmm. But you. You kind of had to pick it early because it fell. No, no, that one I cut. Oh, okay. I wanted to pick it early. I got you. It, it, it was as tall as this one. Yeah. Let me see if I can get it. But that one's not ready. And then this one over here was a Namwa yeah. behind you. Yeah, I, I got one more thing I want to oh, say yeah, about, yeah. This, about okay. this Cardaba, though. Um, of all the varieties out here, it's it's been the most cold tolerant, and it's been the most likely to push its new leaves through the trunk, even when the trunks freeze and it's kind of choked off at the top, it just pushes its new leaves right through. You don't have to go up there and trim it. So considering it's a decent quality, kind of dual purpose banana, and it's more cold tolerant, and it's just, I think it's the most productive and the easiest to grow. Yeah. And yeah that's, that's an awesome a, banana tree. That's an, a Namwa. It's a Namwa. Sometimes people call it ice cream, but. That must be the other one that I, Kind of a different banana that I planted. Yeah, it's pretty though. And then this, this one over here, Blake. They also. This is also a type of Namwa, huh. but sometimes people call it Misi Luki, mm -hmm. and it's not really Misi Luki. Misi Luki is a different banana. Mm -hmm. This one's like a half high Namwa. The height is in between the dwarf Namwa and Back the on. tall Namwa. Oh, that is so cool. You can see the bunch of bananas and then there's the flower at the end of it. Yeah. So pretty much the flower keeps growing down as it pollinates. And you can see how this is still holding on even though it fell over. Now, do these usually fall over because of the weight and also the weather? Withering the tr the middle of the trunk. Yeah, we had a windstorm and it blew over. That happens. But look how tough they are still to want to grow. Yeah. Luckily, you had nature. You had a, a, <laughs> a one of them staghorns. Yeah. To hold it up. These these namwas have been the second most productive type of banana out here. Wow. Is this a type of yam growing here? Yeah, that's air potato. I thought I saw a little potato back. Yeah. That, that, is that one you can eat? I've never tried it. It's know? just like a native? No, they're not native, but I think that's the bitter one that nobody likes. Yeah. You'd have to probably cook it for a while. That's so awesome, John. 
Done. Do you got any others? It looks like you got some more back there. Yeah, that that's I. Uh, the mine sword. A walk. Ping sang, nay walk. Yeah, the tall Namwa they call ice cream. Oh yeah. Yeah. Where's your mine swords at? Way back there. Oh, they're way back there. You might have to get your swamp boots on for that one. Luckily, I got one growing. I tried to show everybody in a YouTube video. Yeah, the beavers have raise the water level up so the bananas are getting flooded. If we ever get a drought for a long time, you're, you're always gonna have some water sitting around. That's not good if it's flooding. That means they'll die. This is a pretty good angle on that. Oh, yeah. This is Cardarba. Do you have any of the Sabra planted or is that? I, d I did have it. It was right over here um, in that area, but it, it died. When the water came up, it got too wet. Right. So Pretty much all of them died except for the ones that were on a little bit of a mound. So you're thinking that you're going to have to bring more dirt in and mound it higher? I'm going to try to keep these alive, but I'm moving all the bananas to the other side of the beaver pond where it's higher. Okay. You can kind of tell this is a little higher than... Uh, you can tell you've been raising this yeah. up. This is Phil from when I tried to make a little drive in. And you can see it's really healthy dirt. See how dark it is? It holds the right amount of moisture and organic matter. That's many years of many dump truck loads of chips being dumped in here. That's amazing. So this is, we need to do a video on doing like the, the way of uh, building topsoil. Oh, yeah. So this is a good example of how you build your soil over time to be organic. You see we're right on the edge of the beaver pond. There's water right there. Sure is. All these pine trees died after the hurricane. Burnt back. Almost every pine tree died. The oaks are alive, the magnolias are alive. And they didn't fall down. It just racked their roots. And it was and, enough to kill them. And that plus the beavers raising the water so high. You I drowned them. All throughout here. It's, the pines have died everywhere. They have. Well, that's more organic matter for the bananas. There's two and a half acres here, and there's only four pine trees left alive, the mature ones. Oh, yeah. You can see all the dead ones. They all died. And they seem to be on higher, this one's on higher land on that corner. Well, thank you, John. I really enjoyed seeing these and trying it. That is a really good banana. I can't wait for mine to make bananas. You want to see the, um, want to see what we did over here? Yeah. We'll catch you later.